Hey everybody, Nathan Fowkes here, and in this series, we've been trying to get underneath the quote-unquote rules and figure out the principles that drive them so that we can figure out when the rules might be useful for our own work and the times when they won't be. So let me set this up for you because in terms of color relationships, my students often use terminology like complementary colors or using triads or maybe something like a split complement as ways of dealing with color. And when they do, I slap the brush or the stylus out of their hand. No, I'm just kidding, sorry. Just making sure I have your attention. But they're often not clear on why those things work because those kinds of color ideas are strategies for using color. They're not principles of color. The principle is the underlying idea that inform the strategy. And by the way, if you're new to this and you're not familiar with this color terminology, don't worry about it. In my experience, if you get yourself familiar with underlying principles of color, you're golden. Okay, so I've just opened up a big can of worms, too big for one little YouTube video. But there is one aspect of color relationships that's very simple, very useful, and I want to go over that with you. And if you're ever interested in going further, my online color and light class and also my color and light workout are always available for you. Self-study, inexpensive subscription from the fantastic platform schoolism.com. But let's dive to our idea here. So one of my favorite things is to go outside with my little landscape painting sketchbook. It's just my favorite thing. And if you're not a landscape painter, please don't jump ship yet. We're talking about principles here that are true for anyone who uses color, but we can illustrate it with this because here's just a little quick thing that I did, but I was making color notes for myself about rich color combinations that I was seeing. It was late spring interspersed with the grass were little tiny purple flowers there in the foreground you can see that violet band and then there were little patches of red flowers and a few accents of grass that was still green as well and it was just such a lush but subtle color combination in ranges that we usually think of as being quite dull so i quickly laid some paint down i just want to zoom in on this because I absolutely loved the way that these violet flowers, and I'm just using dry brushing here, putting down the warm yellow and then dry brushing the cool gray purple over top. They're about the same value. And so, yes, they do complement each other. The yellow looks more vividly rich because of the purple and the purple looks more vividly rich because of the yellow. And yet, neither one is a highly saturated color. And I'm throwing around some art terms here. This is what they mean visually, hue, saturation, and value. So we have something like this going on. We have just kind of a dull neutral yellow. And we have a purple. It's not super saturated, but you put them together and a dull yellow suddenly turns electric. You know, it's kind of like something that's light will feel very light when you place it next to something very dark. So when you have two hues of color that are close in value, light and dark, but very different from each other in hue, they tend to intensify each other. So some of you out there might be saying, reasonably, well, Nathan, what you have here are complementary colors, the thing that you complained about at the top. But instead, let's use the artist terminology of the principle at play here, which is the simultaneous contrast of color. Put two colors side by side, and if there's anything that are different about those two colors, it will intensify the sense of the difference. So understanding this can help you turn mud into magic. So let's put this into play. Here is a little sketch, just a thumbnail based on a trip to the Middle East. 
and I wanted to get that warm sandstone kind of a quality in the architecture, the vivid yellow light, but also the colorful relationships of the bazaar here. And so I want to point out the thinking in making these color choices. So before I knew better, I could have easily said, okay, I see kind of a cool purplish color there, so I dutifully mix a cool purple. And then I see a cool green and dutifully mix a cool green color. And then down here, okay, I see a, a, a coolish kind of a blue cyan cool color and dutifully mix that. And if I would have done it, it would have been a terrible mistake. And I would have come out the other side with a painting that everybody other than my mom would turn away from in horror. Well, here's why. Let's take that purple and surround it with an actual purple. It's not purple at all. It's actually really warm. And let's take that cool green and surround it with an actual cool green. Oh my gosh. And then you know where this is going. Our blue here, well, surely it will at least feel a little bit cyan. No, it won't. It feels like a very warm color in this context. Do you see the potential problem here? How colors can very easily fool you into mixing or choosing the wrong color and then wondering why it looks so terribly bad? So I have an exercise I want to invite you to do because way back in the 90s, I did these, I mean, by the hundreds. And the reason I did so many was because I was trying to launch my career. I was working long hours. I would come home exhausted, but I knew I had so much more to learn, but not much time and not much energy, but I knew I needed to do something. So I'd get out my acrylics at my desk and I would just sit down and I would just mix different colors, put them down and see what they did. Because a painting, digital, traditional, or in any media is just a bunch of colors side by side. And we have to have a feel for how colors influence each other. So should you use a triad or a split complementary relationship or buy a gamut mask? Well, all of those things can be helpful, but they come after we learn and practice good basic principles. So just try putting different colors down side by side. Think about how light or dark the colors are. Think about how saturated or pure or desaturated they are and think about what the hue is. And if the colors start to feel clashy and garish, well, then they have too much contrast. How do you fix that? Well, try less hue contrast. Maybe reduce the saturation of some or all of the image. Maybe reduce the value contrast. I felt like I had pretty interesting results in this one by having a lot of hue contrast, the oranges, the greens, the purples, the blues, but I thought they felt pretty good together because there's very low value contrast. And so it's not so busy and distracting and we can just enjoy how the hues simultaneously contrast. So to wrap up and to clear up, I'm not against anything. This is art. Go for it. And if you're familiar with the triads and the split complements and you want to play with those color relationships in this context, go for it. Just be sure you're reaching for why those things work. And this exercise can help. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to do these in paint. Doing them digital is absolutely legitimate and highly beneficial. Okay, so keep an eye out. I have a part two for you where I'm going to do a little step-by-step -step demo. Hopefully it'll come out for you in the next couple of weeks. Until then, I wish you the very best for your artwork.